Hey everybody, this is Dave. Uh, this is something a little bit different for me. I'm in Streeter, Illinois, and we're out here in an old area of town and where there used to be a lot of cabins back in the seven, late 17, early 1800s. And uh, there's a cemetery out here called Naramore, and this place was pretty much uh, deserted and cattle had run over through here and all the headstones were gone. And I've got a cousin who gets into genealogy, and so he found out about this place. And he came out here, and him and a few other people, his friends, they decided to uh, do some probing, get some uh, underground imagery done, and find stones to stand them back up, and do some genealogy searching all over the place, reading, research, and identifying who, who actually were, these people were. And a lot of them... Uh, were founding members of Streeter, Illinois, but they're from the 1800s. Uh, they died in the early 1800s. And uh, John has been showing us, uh, John Ketman, who's my cousin, has been showing us how they go in and do some probing around and they find stones, headstones. They actually, they actually find some that are river stones and uh, they're etched with people's names. Some of them were with wood crosses. And, and he does a lot of repair on these stones. It's a labor of love for John and something he's really interested in. As you can see, here's one of the stones that they put back together. And they also put them in place. And uh, it's really a nice uh, thing he's doing here, taking care of this place where these people would be forgotten. Here's John over here with Vicky. We'll have to see that one. So here's an example of a stone that was just a stone taken out of the river and the name was carved in it. Uh, this was back in 1900, it looked like they uh, passed away. And uh, here's one of the main family members that the place is named after. Here's a, where a child had died in 1903. So all these stones were missing. Uh, they were gone, cattle were in here, and John had to do a lot of fighting with one of the neighborhood farmers out here to get control of this place. And tomorrow he's got WGN, which is a well-known broadcasting TV channel uh, in Chicago. They'll be coming out here to do a special on him. So. Uh, He's looking, of course, for people that'll help him out, give him a little bit of money for paying for gas to mow the place and glues to fix things. But it's a really neat old place. Bronson's passed away. Uh, William Martin Bronson died in 1883. And when he passed away, the wife and the children donated many acres of land for streeters glass company called Owens Glass today provided the roads to transport the glass. So if it wasn't for Mr. Bronson and his family, they wouldn't have no way to transport the glass because that was all his property at the time. And that, and, and just to mention, I mean, Streeter was the glass capital of the world for, became, for many years for, for many gla years. glass containers. Yes, yes. It became, it became the glass capital of the world. But it, it all started from from William Martin Bronson. What that is is a family stone, and you can see the bison at the base of it, and you oh, can yeah. see the hump on it. And a friend of ours who does, they do cemetery crawls. They travel all over the country. They know all the symbols and, and, and how a lot of this stuff is made. That base was buried, that whole Concre uh, marble block was down in the ground. This this was put up with ropes. No no power, nothing. It was all done by hand. Finger pointing to the sky there on all these. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like a a a like a gate to heaven. Like he's got a uh, he's got a clear path to heaven. Like he's risen. Was that common in the 1800s or this something? Was a, this is a different way of a, a symbol that would go on. After, it was an after. added to an added symbol that would go, get put or 
carved into the marble stones that you could get, uh, you know, for, for something for paying extra. Yeah. When you look at John Holly's stone, we don't know a whole lot about him. All I can tell you is the top of his stone was under that tree's root of that tree. And it took us wow. six to eight hours to dig out just the top part. So how did it get clear over there, you think? The the cemetery was was a, a covered herd of black Angus cows that destroyed it. Huh. Total neglect. Yeah. So what I tried to do here is to put a birdhouse with a Christmas thing because you think Christmas, you think holly. Right. So John Holly, rest in peace, birds welcome, was a was John Holly's thing. Okay, nice. So the birdhouses when when full would communicate to create a spirit of these people like they'd communicate afterwards That's, okay th that was the thing that i had with it baby that john found was like 20 days old and it was never accounted for in any of the genealogy of the family so uh, it's just an interesting discovery made out here so what i'd like to do is take the divining rods and show you how they crisscross and flip as i walk this whole aisle that'd be interesting to see they will male female died at birth all that they just wing and wing out as you crisscross and find bodies it doesn't look like there's nothing here but when you find when you cross over you can you can either tell how long how tall the bodies are and whether or not it's a male or female the average male in 1865 or the 1860s was about five foot six Okay. So there's no giant people out here but one, and they said he was a monster of a guy, and he was a farmhand that worked for the crafts. Now, do you think that, that the, do you think of the height of the people average out here is because of where they came from? I mean, I noticed a lot of people were Irish out here, and I know the stature of some of the some Irish. Some but a lot of it was due to diet. Yeah, yeah. So, as, as all my watchers know, uh, I'm not much into t divining rods, but... Uh, I've watched John do it. It's pretty convincing when he's walking over graves, but uh, I'll let him tell the whole story here. So in 2012, I discovered this, what used to be this old cemetery here, and we've unearthed a bunch of stones, as you see, but there's also the things that you can't see, and there's only one, there's only a few methods to figure out what's under the ground without modern technology. And one of them was this. And we researched it online that you could find water with them. I made them out of copper because this is just stuff I bought at Home Depot, Menards, and made them myself. But you have to you have to let it take over, kind of like a like a body compass is what I call it. But with the experience that I've learned from them, you can tell if it's a male or a female, how tall the person was, which indicates pretty much its age. If it's a little baby, it's two feet tall, it's just common sense. But in this case, we could only find a couple gravestones and everybody wanted to know, hey, is there any stones here? We can't find stones, but there's bodies here. How do we find them? Lo and behold, this method has worked pretty pretty good out here and what I'm going to show you is we got this 50 foot area 60 foot area here that you could walk and as I'm walking when they crisscross it's a male if they go one if one of the wires or rods flips over it's a it's a female so what you're going to do now you're already seeing these things crawling and it's you don't see me pushing at all. So when I start walking, they're gonna crisscross and they're gonna, one will go one way and one will flip by itself. So if one of them flips, it's indicating that it's a female. And you're gonna walk this whole 50 I'm feet walk area this where? Whole area. We have a female right here. And as I cross over her body, it will flip back. All right, I'm already over a body. Oh, look, we got another one, another female. Look 
looks like we got a male here, maybe a mom and dad, maybe a, a farmhand or something. Look at that. Now this will work even if you're on a 40 mile an hour wind, it will still move that way. So here I'm crossing over. Definitely female, you've seen that thing swing by itself. That ain't me doing that. So you, you'll say, hey, can I do this at a regular cemetery? Will it work there? Absolutely. If you want to know if your loved one's buried there, it's a good way to tell if there's somebody down there or not. Look, we have a male here. Another male. Here we're coming up to two stones or one gravestone with two brothers on it. Usually when two kids or three family members die within a week or a month, they'll get one stone and put two names on it. You're gonna see two crisscrosses here with the two boys. You should, you should see it. There's one. There's the brother. He's right here. I'm right, right, right on top of the brother. Okay, now I'm crossing over. That's a, that's definitely a male and that's marked off with a stick. That's a, that's a male here too. It's marked with a piece of river rock, which probably had a, a wooden cross in front of it at the time because people didn't have the money. We have a male here, There's, it's marked with a hard piece of river rock. Possibly a husband and wife because that's a male, that's a female. We have a female here. Whoop, and a male. <laughs> There's a male here too, look at that, okay. That's a male. We got a little baby here. It's a little boy, isn't it? We'll see if it's a little boy, right? Bingo, there's your little boy. Pretty cool, huh? What was that, the 20 day old one? Yeah. Uh-huh. What do you think of that? That's crazy. <laughs> So he puts up these birdhouses and uh, the owls come in when there's eggs in them and just rip apart the birdhouses and destroy them. So how many how many have you had that happen to? Six or eight. Huh. But they so, had the family names and the professions of the people. On yeah. Them. So so tell the story of what happened when you come out here on Halloween last year. You and your friends just come out at night just to see. You know, if there was a lot of activity going on out here. We come out here because you've heard their theories of, of, of these cemeteries being haunted, right? We so. have pictures of one guy holding the shotgun that shot the little boy. We have a thermal image of him in perfect color, showing his whole outline of his whole body with a shotgun, but no face. It's Man, just his back. That's crazy. Then over there, we have a either Native American woman with a tomahawk or a medicine man doing a dance and running across that gravestone at night. Wow. That was captured completely in the dark, pitch black. Then over here, there's a wormhole. It's kind of like three of us were standing in this spot and we're having a conversation and all of a sudden everything around us just we lost total sight of it we, we didn't even know where and then five minutes after this we we lost our direction we didn't even know where we were at we were all confused huh and one of the other guy one of the other people we, we kind of lost a lot of our memory wow so it took a while to get that back from this so you believe that there's haunting definitely haunting spirits if you, in here. If you come out here with intentions 
to shake something up, you're gonna get shook up. Wow. You, you don't mess with it. So everything out here, it, we come out here for good intentions, which I'm not afraid of anything out here. Right. So. I definitely won't be out here at night shaking nothing up. You won't be out here shaking things up at night either, will you, Vic? No. No way, man. Pretty neat. You gotta hear, you didn't hear about Laura's husband. So what's the story on Laura? I know she's related to us, so how exactly is she related again? It would be our grandpa, our grandma, Coleman. let's see, Grandma Coleman, who married John Kepman. Her grandfather was John Coleman and came from Ohio in 1831. He married four different times. His second wife was a, it, it's spelled Thenia Roxana Col, uh, Cowgill, but he marries her on his second marriage. This is Roxana's mother's gravestone. The father, which was one of the first people in Streeter also had a blacksmith shop that's and why I like to do blacksmiths, blacksmith stuff right there. Yeah, out of steel. So the guy, if, <laughs> if you were to be in Water Street and Streeter, his blacksmith shop was located at the top. Uh, William, or uh, jo William Joseph, Joseph, and sometimes he's referred to as Junkins. I love that name. William Junkins Cowgill had a heart attack in November of uh, 18, 1847. So in 1847, on Christmas, Christmas Day, John Coleman marries Roxena Cowgill. They give all the land, everything goes to John Coleman. He gets it all. In our family. In our family, <laughs> yeah. For some so, money. <laughs> this is one of this was my original quest to come out here to actually look for her even though we could not find Laura for several years we just one day I just one day come out here poked the ground and found her stone so what you're also seeing is this base that came at the bottom it's kind of like they call it like a socket base where the stone just fits it's usually made out of limestone where this part is made out of marble and it sits in the socket. Interesting. And there's usually, but we found a clamshell that had been placed there from probably her grandkids that apparently paid for this marker for her. I do have a journal that was written in during World War II that tells about the grave and who was buried next to Laura. Mm -hmm. But the, the question that I've got, which we can't find the stones, but I know they're here, are all four of John Coleman's wives are buried next to So Laura which Calcio. So which one gave birth to the Coleman children then? That, that would be related to us then, of the four women? The fourth one. The fourth one, okay. Which was Letitia Griffith. <laughs> Letitia Griffith has royal blood so that one is was the right one to be married to not to cut down you know the cowgill <laughs> because they're of, of famous british uh royal descent as well pretty famous people but um john john was married to the fourth one so where's john buried at crazy as it is our poor John Coleman was buried in Ottawa because he lived on South Ottawa until he died in 1885. His gravestone, little baby marker, overlooks the baseball field right across the street from Kroger's huh. in Ottawa. Isn't that crazy? Dig down. What would you dig down for like an hour on this one, finding it? Jane, Jane Barry and I dug what? like probably two or three different days of time to dig to get that out of there. Now that looks just like a river rock, like bedrock, because there is some bedrock in the river around here on the Vermilion River, but you can see some of the writing. It just looks like a T.O. right there. So he's working on figuring out this one.
if people wanted to donate or they want to go to your site that specifically talks about what you do yeah i mean do you have like a gofundme page set I have up a, i have a bank account set up a a non-profit uh bank account which is all 100 percent used for uh fixing up the lawnmowers or weed eaters or anything uh supplies to clean the stones yeah tools to fix the stones all of that money 100 percent of it is used from that account that's where all the money comes from uh but it's all set up for the cemetery so what, what what's the website for that it, uh Naramore cemetery restoration and or you could go to the streeter historical society in streeter and donate it and then like i like i say before a dollar will go somewhere two dollars will go somewhere it right. all adds up I'm not, so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that uh, i'll get your website link and i'll put that in the information of this video and people can go click on that and uh, and I, I know firsthand. I you know I've known John my whole life, so I know this is uh, gonna go to this to this cemetery to, to, so that these people's memories and their history is not lost. The so. story can be told to the world. Awesome. We would say this. You know what? What's the purpose of us coming out here? What's the reason for it? And it's they want their story to be told. They want they want to they want the people of today to hear about what they dealt with back then because prior to the area newspaper going back to 1870 these people arrived here in 1831 right their story needs to be told somewhere and i've got it all right john uh, hopefully some people thank will you. uh check you out thank you